So, so far, our result was not so impressive because the implementation was made to handle an arbitrary number of landmarks, but we never added one. So now we'll have a look at how to add a landmark to our system state. Now, this addition of landmarks will happen later on whenever the robot observes an object in the measurements for which it doesn't find a corresponding landmark in the current list of landmarks. So in the beginning, the robot state is x, y and theta the heading. And so if we add one landmark, this will be augmented to contain x, y, theta and x1, y1. And we will use the robot's measurement of the bearing angle and the distance to obtain this x1, y1. And of course, if I add one more landmark, I will obtain x, y, theta, x1, y1, and x2, y2, and so on. Now what happens to the covariance matrix? Well, this is initially a 3 times 3 matrix containing the variances and covariances. And now if I add one landmark, I will still have this 3 times 3 submatrix here, but I will have two more date variables. So this will be a 5 times 5 matrix. And how shall I initialize all those new elements? We will assume that this new landmark is not correlated with the previous state, and we will assume that x and y of the new landmark are uncorrelated, and since we don't know anything about the initial position before our first measurement, we will assume those values to be infinity. And now for the practical implementation, we will use 10 raised to the power of 10, which by the way means that the standard deviation is 10 raised to the power of 5, which is 100,000, and since all this is in millimeters, this is 100 meters. So it is not infinity, but it is much larger than the size of our arena. So all you have to do now is, whenever you add a landmark, add two more state variables and keep the old ones, and also extend the matrix by two elements for both the rows and columns, set the infinity values here and zero here, put back the new state in the Kalman filters state variable, put back the new covariance in the covariance member variable and do not forget to increase the number of landmarks which is also a member variable of the Kalman filter by one. So now let's implement this. So here's the code I prepared slam 9b slam add landmark and it is the same as the previous code. So you may want to put your previous code for the prediction down here and here is the new member function you'll have to implement. So all it gets are the xy coordinates of the new landmark and it should enlarge the state vector by two elements for x and y of the landmark and the number of rows and columns of the covariance matrix also by two it should increment the member variable number of landmarks and it should return the index of the newly added landmark instead of minus one. That is all there is to do. And I added a few other functions the getLandmarks function will return a list of all landmarks and the getLandmark error ellipsis will return a list of error ellipsis, one ellipse for each landmark that is in the current state. Now down here in the main function, here is one addition. Since we do not yet have the code to add landmarks automatically whenever our robot sees a new one, we just add one manually, namely at the position 400, 700. And if your code works correctly, you will see this landmark at that position later on, but the error ellipse will be so large that you can't see it. So I also added some code to set the variance in X to 300 millimeters and in Y to 500 millimeters. So you will see not only the landmark's position, but also a suitable error ellipse. Now in the main part, nothing changed in the Kalman filter, but down here, I added two calls, which will write out all the cylinders of the landmarks and their associated error ellipses. This uses write cylinders and write error ellipses, and those two functions are imported at the beginning of the code. And after you implemented and ran this, it will produce the ekf slam add landmarks.txt file. So load this, and you will see the following. There's the trajectory, and there's also our landmark at 400, 700, with a standard deviation of 300 in X and 500 in Y. And of course, since we do not process any measurements so far, the landmark's coordinates are not influenced by the robot and neither the robot is influenced by the landmark. And so we obtain our previous trajectory for the robot and a landmark which is constant in position and which has a constant covariance matrix. So adding observations will be our next step, but first, please program the addition of a single landmark to the state and covariance.